Hello, and welcome to the Outer Wilds Alpha Edition. With the echoes of the IDLC not coming out soon enough, I figured I'd sate my need for content by playing one of the earliest versions of the game. While I have finished the full game, I have no idea how much content the Alpha contains, but I'll be sure to go over detail in our playthrough. And uh, without much further ado, let's begin. Okay, that's a lot different than the full game. Oh, there goes the, uh, oh, the probe. Giant Steep, Battle Rock. And, uh, just a fair warning, I will be spoiling the majority of the full game. So if you have not played it yet, go play that. It's an amazing game. And, uh, let's see what's, uh, different about this world. Sup, Slate? You look more alien than usual. Hey, you ready to go up this thing off the ground? She's all fueled and ready to go. So how are you feeling? All systems go. I'm glad you're excited, but if you wreck the ship, I'm not building a new one. Do I look like I'm made out of lightweight re-entry grade aluminum alloys? No, you kind of look like you're made of rubber. Anyway, you just need those... Oh, there's the music. That's a lot earlier than usual. You just need those notch codes from the observatory. You'll be right out of here. Not having second thoughts, are you? Uh, where are those notch codes again? The curator has those notch codes. He'll be at the observatory. I'm starting to think he lives there. Okay, kind of looks like uh, nobody has any real names. This Slade is a rocket scientist. How's the ship looking? Great. Hey, you might get a kick out of this. I've repurposed the spare, repurposed the spare oxygen tank to be used as an extra combustion chamber. Is that safe? Probably. Oh, you. Never change. How safe would you say this thing is? Oh, it's a perfect 10. Unless you're factoring in pilot error, in which case it's about a 4. Oh. No offense. Well, in the full game, Slate did call you an idiot at one point, so this is kind of on brand for him. There's our launch pad. Get the ships up there. Requires the launch codes, yep. Oh, that's the sound of when the autopilot stops. Or aborts, I think. Ooh. Oh, those are chimneys, not geysers. And I'm not seeing any geysers, so that might not be a thing here. Hello. You're wearing something different. I see you're off for some last minute practice. Well, the training rockets can't stay on forever, huh? We'll, be all, we'll all be cheering for you at the launch, of course, from a safe distance. Oh, that's all you got to say. And it's nighttime again, wow. Okay, if that's dark bramble, that is massive. Hello, what you looking at? Yeah, I know, pretty big, huh? Good luck on your expedition. Any idea where you go first? If it were me, I'd check out that gnarled thorny one you can see in the sky on certain nights. I wonder how big it really is. Uh, if only you knew. Oh, wow. Two-story buildings? Nice. Yeah, you still can't get in them. Let's see. If I talk to you from here, will you actually turn to me? Oh, okay. Have you seen that statue in the observatory? It makes my brain hurt just thinking about it. I wonder if you'll bring back anything that weird from your expedition. You must be talking about the Nomai statue, but, I mean, besides being a statue, there was nothing really that weird about it. You're actually blasting off in that thing, huh? They really don't explode as often anymore. All I know is between the space program and that kid's model rockets, things seem to burn to the ground around here more than they used to. Oh. I'm told my odds of survival are statistically quite high. Yeah, the space program's certainly come a long way. Guess that makes it more appealing to go to the gallivanting off into space. By the way, good luck with those retro rockets. Oh, I'm gonna need it. Oh, we have a satellite. Or a radar dish, or something. Oh, there's Hollow's lantern, it looks like. And a little hollow. Ah. So good just to be back in here. We even have clouds, look at that. Real clouds. Okay, there's so much to see. Can't get sidetracked. Uh, Mika, you're looking a little young today. Hey, it's you. Shouldn't you be in space by now? Oh, I get it. You want to practice landing with a pro, huh? I like to pretend those tree stumps are planets and moons. Show me what you got. All right. I'm an expert at this, so let's see. Okay, thrust. Oh, looks like it's about the same. Oh. How do I know? Oh, there we go. Oh, the thrust is not as good as the other one. Uh, oh, almost. Oh no, oh no. Uh oh. Okay, we can save this. We can save. You know what? This will be our first try. 
Here we go. So don't just easy does it. Easy does. It. And okay. Oh jeez. Okay, that was. Uh, hmm. Hey too. Oh yeah. Mm. You didn't see that then. Okay. Well, that's probably for the best. Ah, the zero G cave. Let's go. Oh. Uh, jumping is just jumping. There's no wind up or anything like that. Oh hello. Is that a telescope? Hmm, oh hello astronaut. I'm listening for sounds with my telescope. Oh, not a signal scope. Heard anything interesting? Everything's interesting in space, astronaut. But the outpost on the moon is coming in loud and clear. Okay. I'm using my telescope. Zoom in, zoom out, okay. Well, of course, now there's nothing in the sky, so that's a bummer. And oh, oh that's just a satellite. Hello, Gosan, or uh, should I call you Zero G Coach? Hey, I thought I might see you for a little last minute Zero G training before the big launch. Nerves getting the better of you? I'm a little nervous, yeah. Good, everyone should be nervous going into space. I got a bit cocky during my first flight and nearly put a crater in the moon. Of course, I was never quite as green and out of sorts as you. Hey, I've gotten better. Think so? Well, it's time to find out. I've set up an old satellite in the Zero G cave for you to repair. Get to it and try not to concuss yourself right before your lo first launch. You know what? I will concuss myself just to just to prove you right or wrong. Hold on. Oh. Okay, so the suit's working. I wonder which way I need to go. Oh, okay, we're just zero G immediately. No warning. Okay. This must be the satellite. Lock off. This controller is kind of busted, so I'm going to have to do this manually. That's one. Okay, my fuel is going down pretty quickly. I'm almost at half now. Oh, is it recharging? It is recharging. So fuel recharges after not using. Interesting. Uh, let's repair you. Done. And where is the last one? Where are you? Ah, probably hiding in the middle, like the uh, like the full version. Here we are. And ooh, gotta love that sound. It's no wonder they kept him in the in the real game. Okay. Uh, where do I go? Where do I get out of here? This way? Yeah, that way. So, in the full game, the zero G cave was zero G because it was the center of the planet. But here, it looks like it's sort of just right here. So, oh, and gravity's back. So, maybe the physics is a little bit different. Uh, do I put this back? Nope. Okay, cool. Ah, nicely done. Of course, it'll be a little more stressful when you're hurtling at fast speeds through the endless void of space. And with that, your training is officially complete. Welcome to the space program. I see you're already itching to get off this rock. You'll find launch codes over at the observatory. Best of luck out there, and hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I've put so much time into training you. You know what? I will. Ooh, I can roast a marshmallow. Oh, it's just a temperature gauge. Well, let's, let's not burn it. Well, okay, maybe a little bit of heat. Never hurt anybody. And eat. Tasty. Okay, uh, let's go to the observatory and meet the curator for the launch codes. Uh, flashlight. Okay, jumping feels a little bit faster. Speedrunning tips for those out there. Looking to beat the alpha speedrun. Ooh. So that's just the village. This crater has always been our home. In fact, for generations, we assumed it was the entire world. Now that we know our crater is but one of many geographical depressions on a tiny rock hurling through the endless void of space, but it's still our favorite. Yes, it is. Postcards from orbit. Established, okay. Uh, we use sky shutter satellites. Yeah, this is a satellite. Now it's your turn. Yep. Oh, there we go. There's the village. Nice. What are you? 
This ancient statue is the subject of heated debate. The level-headed among us adhere to the obvious explanation that the statue simply phase shifts whenever you look away from it. Ah, introducing this so quickly. This hasn't stopped our more imaginative thinkers from making the ridiculous argument that it actually exists in every possible configuration simultaneously and only collapses to a single state while it's being observed. Whatever the explanation, both sides agree the effect is extremely creepy. So, this is supposed to be quantum then, huh? Uh, what if I do this? Oh, wow. Yeah, that is creepy. That is very creepy. Looks like the Nomai... If this is a Nomai statue, then definitely looks more alien than goat. <laughs> Alrighty. For you. All of our spacecraft are powered by the intense chemical reaction that takes place inside this highly reinforced energy converter. Originally, the conversion chamber wasn't reinforced at all, but this, that changed after an early model successfully converted 78% of the ship's hull into usable energy. Oh, okay. That must be our reactor. Our planet is the only one in the solar system which, with an oxygen-rich atmosphere, which means our astronauts must carry their own air supply with them. These tanks are designed to automatically refill whenever oxygen is present, which allows the wearer to avoid an incredibly painful death by asphyxiation. Ah, yes. That would be best avoided. The pilot, this pilot seat is all that remains of our species' inaugural flight into space. Although it's been argued that such a distinction requires an, an overly liberal definition of flight, that day will always remain a landmark achievement in the history of our planet. So probably Feldspar seat. Helmets like these are our explorer's window on the universe. Each helmet is custom made to fit its wearer, with a stylish gold visor that protects, provides protection from direct sun exposure. Okay. Looks a lot like uh, Chert's helmet than most of the others, with its oval shape. Ah, here we go. Uh, I start over here. These five uh, displays depict the life cycle of a massive star similar to our sun. Such a star will remain in the main sequence phase and the longest as it gradually fuses the hydrogen into its core and its core into helium. Once all the hydrogen is infused into helium, the star begins fusing helium into even more heavy, heavier elements. I believe these are all the same. Then. Yep, has to expand, red giant, collapse, and then you have the supernova. Alright, best estimates indicate that our own sun will go supernova in less than 2 million years. Wow. Well, oh, then we're safe then. Let's see. Oh no. Huh. Okay, that is way less scary. I know. This tooth belongs to an adult version of the juvenile anglerfish in the tank. If adult proportions are consistent with that of the smaller fish, they must grow to nearly the size of our spacecraft. Yeah. Or more. This is... Huh. I don't recognize this. Well, I guess we'll be on the lookout for some sort of strange antennae. Ah, the balls. Watch closely. These balls move on their own. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes this spooky motion? The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the moon's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. It's pulling on you right now. Ah. So the physics and gravity do exist to an extent. Or this is just scripted. Let's see. Whoa. Well, there's a cactus. I'm guessing that's the Nomai escape pod. And this is probably Ember Twin. Oh, there's nothing to... Uh, Oh, I know what this is though. There we go. Hello. This crystal was taken from an ancient ruin on Brittle Hollow. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was most likely used to reverse steep surfaces. Yeah, okay. Well, they look more crystal than purple, so that's a change. Oh, how do I get back to gravity? Okay, gravity, take me. Maybe I should walk away? Yeah, okay. Some of our own expedition gear actually incorporates technology we reverse engineered from ancient artifacts. This surveyor probe M Mark IV features unlimited warp ability that has dramatically reduced the rate at which our astronauts lose them to the depths of space. In theory, this warp technology should also work on organic life forms, but further experimentation has been recently hampered by a sudden shortage of volunteers. Hmm. Yeah, no kidding, trying to warp living beings. This piece of ancient technology bears a marked resemblance to the slide projector in this observatory's atrium. 
Assuming this advanced alien technology adheres to inexplicably similar principles, we believe it is to be some form of data projection device. Further research will undoubtedly ensure if we ever figure out how to turn it on. Okay, so maybe it's like a scroll or something for them. Oh, that definitely looks like uh, maybe brittle hollow? The surface of it, maybe. Oh, hello. So this 1.5 million year old skull belonged to one of the ancient people who used to dwell in our solar system. Although we have unearthed many of their artifacts and structures, we still have no idea where these people came from or what happened to them. Okay, so they aren't even—they don't even have a name yet. With only three eyes, it's easy to wonder if their disappearance had something to do with inferior depth perception. <laughs> All right. So, and what are you? The discovery of this stone codex on the hourglass twins has allowed us to translate many of the symbols left behind by the ancient people who used to inhabit our solar system. Oh, so this is their writing system. Although this translation is an ongoing effort, we are fairly certain that this specific inscription is a recipe for cactus stew. <laughs> okay, so I have heard of this one where we know that the Nomai ate cactus stew on Ember Twin. So we have a little bit of an idea of what their diet was like. So, and there you are. What is, oh, okay. Still creepy. And, yep. Okay, uh, I must have, where are you curator? Oh, there you are. Hello, curator. There you are. I just finished pre-flight observations and local conditions are good. Except, to be honest, I've been getting some disturbing reports from the other travelers. It sounds like things are changing out there. Uh, what did the report say? Well, apparently Birdle Hollow's volcanic moon has started erupting, and seismic activity has been detected beneath the hourglass twins. Seismic activity? Oh, and there are storms brewing in Giant's Deep, and, well, you get the picture. The point is, things are changing out there, faster than we've ever seen. I want to make for one hell of an expedition. Exciting stuff, isn't it? Almost makes me wish I were a traveler myself. Almost. Ah, I almost forgot. Here are the launch codes. You're a go for launch. Be careful out there. Wow. Sounds like the entire universe is starting to go crazy. Be careful out there. I will. View map. Okay. Whoa. Yep. Yeah, I kind of expected that. Uh, okay. Oh, we're just zooming out forever. So yeah, Dark Bramble is massive. My goodness. Oh, you got the white hole. You got the gnome. Oh, the nomad. Not the interloper. Riddle Hollow. I am here. The Hourglass Twins. What? Is that thing propelling? Okay, that's a mystery. Wow, even in the alpha, there are still things that are just completely strange and it feels like I'm playing a almost a new game even though you know it's an older one all right well if we're, oh oh whoops oh okay you caught me you got me okay oh oh here is it oh, is it happening uh oh he's got beats he's got beats by dre uh I'm guessing that was where the loop starts, but it was just a loading screen. That was it. So nothing feels different. Huh. Well, best not to think too much of it. To the launch tower. Can't forget our speedrunning strats. All right. Aha. I have the codes. Oh. See you, Slate. Got anything else for me? Looks like you're ready to take off. All this excitement is fun, but I can't wait to get back to working on the new spaceship. We're working on fixing the autopilot's avoidance system for this one. Ah, uh, sorry. Huh. Alrighty, let's activate the lift. So I figured, uh, with so much to explore, we just start one planet at a time, you know. You know, do a thorough uh, look at things. Okay. Uh, yep, there's our reactor. Oh, okay, there's our hatch. Uh oh. There's our very skin tight suit and the computer. Boot up. Timber hearth. Records available. The cradle of our species. Highest evergreen population of any planet. Numerous surface craters suggest ancient meter impacts. 
Core composition, liquid, water. Oh, you have an ice core. Okay. The sun. Unstable. Accelerate, accelerated nuclear fusion detected in the core. Oh, so we know something going on. And that is all we have. Um, oh, no time like the present. Okay, let's... Oops. Let's buckle up and toggle view. What does that do? Oh, okay, that's just the landing. New map. There we go. Okay, did that already. Lift off. Well, okay, not as satisfying as the uh, thrusters of the full game ship, but here we go. Wow, Timber Hearth is kind of depressing. Very depressing. Is that just a crater? And that's it? Yep, nothing to see here. Okay, um, let's see what else we can find. Oh, oh. And another crater. Oh, that looks like something. What could you be? How do I roll? Can I roll? Okay, that button might be roll. What are you? Okay. Well, first stop. What well, looks to be some kind of Maybe a warp receiver pad of some kind. Well, let's see how well the... F oh, okay. Let's okay. So there's no, like, boost in jetpack. It's just one jetpack. Or maybe there is boost. Oh, there is boost. Never mind. Take me. Okay. No signals. No nothing. I didn't see anything in the maze, I don't think. Okay. Let us see what else there is to explore. This surveyor probe is designed to help our explorers map their environment and assess dangerous situations. It features forward and rear facing cameras, a most reliable hazard detector, and powerful floodlights for illuminating the darkest reaches of space. Excellent. No uh, fun infographic, but it's all good nonetheless. Let's go. So we've got that. Oh, hello. Okay, that's the sun. It just looked weird through the atmosphere. Uh, we got the satellite over there. Can I lock onto it? Uh, okay. Well, not that unsurprising that the uh, Alpha wouldn't have too much in it. it looks like uh, Timber Hearth is just our home crater, a few other craters, and some sort of warp pad thingy. Most likely, I'm just guessing. I don't really know what its purpose is. All right, so after Timber Hearth, I believe the next uh, logical place to go would be the Outer Rock. Where are you? Oh, okay. Hello, atmosphere. Ah, there you are. Uh, autopilot? Do I have autopilot? Oh. Um, okay, we're fine. We're fine. Uh, autopilot. Oh, nope, that's landing. Oh, uh-oh. What's happening? Okay, that's the unlock goal. I don't want to do that. Stop right to target. Let's go to landing mode. Oh, it actually points you towards your destination. That's pretty cool. Much like the Nomai uh, shuttles. Oh, someone's having a party over here. I have my suit on, right? Yep. All right, you making this racket? You are. Hello, Moon Warden. Welcome. It's not often I get visitors up here, you know, it being the moon and all. What can I do you for? Where's that music coming from? See that radio I cobbled together over there? I calibrated it to pick up the music being played by the four other travelers out exploring the solar system. Oh, I see. If you look at the other planets through your telescope, you might be able to hear them too. Uh, anything here worth checking out? Honestly, I think this place is pretty dull. I mean, look at Brittle Hollow's moon. It has volcanoes. Now that's a moon. I suppose the view from the North Pole is pretty spectacular, though. It's a pointy red marker on your minimap. I see it. Uh, so what is it What is it you do here? I'm the warden of the Lunar Lookout. The other travelers used to stop here for repairs, but I haven't seen them in ages. Don't tell anyone, but I spend most of my time launching probes at the village. 
Ah, uh, he's spying on us. The trick is to hold down the launch button so the pressure builds up in the compression chamber. Makes them fly way farther. I believe it's further. Uh, okay. So this is the music we were hearing. So how do I... Oh, probe. Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. There you go. So, yeah, as I said, my controller is a little busted, so I'm going to be pressing some weird buttons at times to launch the probe. But that's okay, I'll, I'll get that fixed later on. Here we go. Ow. Oh! Hello, tree. Oh, wait, he said North Pole. I should probably go there. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Oh. Let's turn that on. Here's uh, oh, it's just a rock. Cool. So, ah, there's harmonica from Dark Bramble. That sounds like Raybeck's banjo. It must be Brittle Hollow. Or is that the Ember Twins? Okay, it must be Behind the Sun then. The Ember Twins, though, I'm not really. Ah, there it is. Okay, Church's playing some lo-fi beats today. And of course we have the best character, Gabra. What the? Okay, I don't know what else that is. Is that the storms on Giant Steep? Well, lots to explore. Let's just make sure we're done with this one. So we have the North Pole marks. What about the South Pole? Anything interesting on there? It looks like... Nothing. Okay, so there's no locator at all. Let's go back to the ship. No fuel, okay. So if I don't do anything, yep, fuel will come back. Okay, I mean, it certainly is better in a uh, saving time sort of mechanic, but it definitely doesn't make any sense. Take me. Ow. I love how it just bonks your head every time you come in. Okay, so I guess, uh, well, Giant Steep is the logical next conclusion, but I think I'm going to save that for the next episode. So uh, thanks for joining me, and uh, I'm, this is really exciting stuff so far. I'm uh, really interested to see like what was going on with that Hourglass Twins or some thruster thing. I don't know what's going on there. Are they actually going to do Dark Bramble? Where's the Quantum Moon? What's all that? So many questions. So it's sort of like a like a Easter egg hunt, and uh, yeah. Well, I hope you join me on the next one. And uh, this is Little Bird signing off. Have a good one. <laughs>